Good morning. Today is Friday, January 8th. I'm Pastor Sean, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin. Oh, there we go. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, to, <laughs> o come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. We continue our uh, journey through Romans today with uh, chapter 1, verses 18 through 32. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions, for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women, and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men, and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. Okay, so, (laughs) not a lot of gospel to pull out here. (laughs) Um, You know, this is a very pretty, very heavy law passage here. Um, And uh, Paul begins to, basically he's he's setting the groundwork for... um, the, the arguments that he's going to get into in Romans. And of course, you know, um, the, the big focal point is that, you know, we are saved by grace alone. That it is God who saves us, that we can't do anything. And so, um, you know, he's showing just how, you know, left, left to our own devices, if, if we're depending on what is within us to bring about anything good, there is no good. It's just, you know, basically cutting down any argument that would, um, that would put us in a position of being able to save ourselves, be able to choose God, be able to show ourselves, um, worthy of anything before God. And he, um, just kind of lays it out here that, you know, nobody is without excuse. And in this first section, he, he talks about what we call the natural knowledge of God. Which is to say, um, you know, for for what God can be known is plain to them because God has shown it to them. Um, for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so that they are without excuse. So um, basically, what this is saying is that you know anybody, even if they've never heard of God, Jesus, um, anything like that, they can look around creation and know about God, 
about his nature. Like, okay, well, he has provided all this. He is great. He is almighty. He has created all these things. Um, and, um, you know, he, he has provided for us. But also, you know, it's like, and, and okay, but, but things are, are not right. You know, evil exists. So we have to, okay, well then, and if you go with, well, God is, is good, well, then evil must be some byproduct of something else, our sin. Um, or you, you assume that God created evil and, you know, so, and so you have a false idea of God, um, or a wrong idea of God, but the, the, the idea persists here that you, you come to the conclusion that there is something beyond us, something greater than us that has set this all up. And, um, so this is where you get, you know, all any, any sort of, um, false religion or other religion, whatever. Um, and even, even when you get into secular humanism and whatnot, um, the fun thing about that is, you know, an atheist I said, well, you know, they look around and they don't see the workings of, of, of God. However, um, every single atheist, every single secular humanist that I've ever talked to, read, um, had any interaction with whatsoever, there's always some sort of a force or thing behind everything that is driving everything. So even like, um, you know, you take something like evolution. And, you know, less, you know, there is no God. It's just this is how life comes about and evolves. And, and there's always it, it's it's moving. This, there's this kind of force or thing kind of guiding the evolution um, in certain ways. And it's like, well, what is that? <laughs> it's like, well, it's evolution. Well, it's okay. So now you're personifying it and saying that there's some kind of a guide behind it. Okay. Um, or just... You know the the universe or whatever some cosmic blah. I don't know. I don't think that anybody truly, um, or it's very rare that somebody truly comes to the conclusion that there is absolutely nothing um, beyond us. That we that everything is truly completely random happenstance, just a, a a blip that happened, and now we have life, and there's nothing to it. I mean, you'd you'd have to be a hyper nihilist, <laughs> um, and I'm sure I guess I'm sure there's there's been people like that, but I think it's very rare, <laughs> and it just doesn't work. So anyway, I'm spending a lot of time getting to this. Um, so he's saying, you know, people just, you know, you, you, you can see God. And so um, they what they do is in, rather than seeking out God and, and through the scriptures, they come up with their own ideas. And so they, they exchange the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal men, birds, animals, reptiles. They basically um, apply their idea of who God is, what God is to other stuff. So they come up with false, false idols, false religions, false gods. And then it gets into this other section about, um, so God gave them up to the lusts of their hearts. And basically, um, you know, God sees the extent to which we will run from him, that we'll try to come up with anything to be an alternate to him, that we don't have to um, recognize God and recognize our sinfulness. He basically says, okay, well, then enjoy. You know, I will, I will let you go into your sinfulness and, and do you just do what you do, do whatever's in your heart. Um, and see, we hear that and we think that's a great thing. I'll just, I'll, I'll be the real me. I'll be whatever's inside me. And, and that's, that's okay. Um, but what we see here is God, you know, Paul is saying that, you know, he's giving us up into our sinfulness and we say, thank you. And we just pursue it with, um, with gusto. You know, we, we pursue our sin, um, you know, left to ourselves you know, left to do what is within us, left to be true to ourselves, we sin on top of sin, on top of sin, on top of sin, and we just never stop. Um, and so, you know, he goes into a long list of, of just how, what, what this, uh, how this manifests in us. Um, and especially, um, you know, about um, women exchanging natural relations to those that are contrary to nature, men giving up natural relations with women, consumed with passion. So, I mean, there's obviously, there's there's a big um, component to this that has to do with uh, sexuality, and um, I don't have time to get into that right now, but um, that is a huge thing, and that is kind of our, um, 
you know, Paul will off, often bring uh, sexual sins up um, first and primarily because those are the ones that we flock to immediately. I mean, that, those are the big ones. Um, and that's what we kind of, those are the, the ones that we uh, tend to um, fall into more than anything. And I mean, look around our, our culture, our world, and it's like, well, yeah, <laughs> that is pretty, plainly evident. Um, okay, wow. Well, it's already ten and a half minutes. Oof. Went went way over today, but um basically the meditation on this is is really it's it's a call to recognize the core of our sinfulness and and how bad it is and how ingrained it is. Um and it's supposed to bring us to a place where we say, Well, who can save me? Who can save me from this body of death? And of course, the answer is Jesus Christ. And Paul will get into that as we go through Romans, and we'll get into that later. So, all right, eleven minutes. So now I need to wrap it up with prayer. Sorry. <laughs> we'll we'll expand on this in the next coming days. Oh Lord, our heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you've safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, thanks be to God. Uh, let, us, let me try that again. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. Sorry I went a little bit over, um, but uh, bear with me and we'll, we'll, we'll build on this in, in, in the coming days. So hope you have a great day and peace be with you.